Today's video is this custom-made Zinn titanium road bike frame. Now the customer who commissioned this is over seven foot tall and their brief was I want it to be comfortable, I want it to be quiet, I just want it to be a perfect riding experience. They found us on YouTube, they saw our video about how we installed DI2 cables to make them as silent and as stealthy as possible and they've asked us to do the construction work. And we've been waiting over a year for this frame to arrive. We've got all the specifications here from Zinn about how they submitted all their measurements and Zinn then custom made this. And it's absolutely work of art. The welds on it are absolutely beautiful. It is such a lovely bike and we're really honored to be able to put it together. Now, one of the things I'm sure you guys are interested in and it got me interested in straight away as well was just how custom is custom. Now it's obviously massive, <laughs> but I compared it to the geometry on a frame that you can just buy off the shelf. And the nearest I could find was this from Linsky, the limited helix gravel frame set is the closest I could find. And the Linsky frame is ever so, ever so slightly shorter in the reach and ever so slightly shorter in the stack as well. So these, it's a small difference, but it's probably enough to make the difference to someone's ultimate riding experience. What I really love about this is that Big people produce big power and everything about this has been made to be robust. Even the mech hanger is robust enough to handle that sort of amazing power going through. Now, some of the other bits and pieces that were fit into this, first of all, is the 130 millimeter Thompson stem. This is actually recommended by Zinn. It's all on their fit guidelines. They say exactly what stem we need, exactly what seat posts we need being fitted up with a GRX group set. They actually recommend 180 millimeter cranks here, but we can only get 175 of the longest we can find. Of course, a Chris King T47 bottom bracket. And I'm gonna talk about how we actually install this because when you're installing aluminum against titanium, you think about what grease you're going to use. We have a new Envy fork because we need a little bit more length in the steerer than the one that's currently in the frame to get the exact specifications that we need. Have an SMP saddle. If you're a big guy and you ride bikes, you'll know all about this saddle. It's renowned for being the most comfortable for bigger riders. And these are absolutely beautiful. These are the Onyx Racing Products hubs. Now, if you want an absolutely quiet hub with instant engagement, these are incredible. They are so quiet, you cannot hear a click from them and they engage instantly. Slightly on the heavy side, but these are just gonna last you forever. And in terms of fitting that brief about the ultimate riding experience, I can't think of anything better, can you? Okay, let's get this build started and I'll show you the details as we go. And we're fitting this just to stop any chance of that or this part vibrating against anything. So the zip tie acts like a type of spring. A little bit of extra cable really helps stop it vibrate because it kind of coils up inside against the things rather than vibrate against it. Nah. Sounding pretty good to me. Okay, time for a quick update then. So, so far we've run all the cables. We've just got some temporary wheels in here to help us set up the handlebar position. And we've run all the heat shrink around here, put those little finishing touches just to make sure that the cables aren't gonna rattle at all. Remember, our brief was completely quiet, completely perfect. So happy with that. The DI2 uh, all works. The Bluetooth module had a bit of a fault in it though. So we're waiting for a new Bluetooth module to arrive. 
and then we'll get all that plugged in to show you. But right now we need to put the bottom bracket in and we have an aluminium Chris King bottom bracket about to be pushed into a titanium frame. So we need to have a little bit of, of think about how we're gonna do that. So to help you with our thinking, I've just pulled off this chart from the internet. This is a, the nobility of materials and we have a problem where titanium right here at the very top and aluminium right down here at the very bottom. So to avoid any sort of galvanic corrosion, we would normally try and find a grease that would be act as a, a, a material in between those. And normally copper would be our go-to. And this is a copper grease. We use it all the time on like steel frames and aluminium bottom brackets. Whenever there's a difference in materials, we would probably go for a copper grease. The materials are quite similar. Uh, what's really common for us is aluminium onto aluminium frames. We would hit up with an aluminium grease. Fairly recently, we've been starting to use this, which is a, a calcium sulfonate grease. Uh, and this is a bit more inert and can be used in quite a lot of different things, including like nylon bottom brackets into carbon frames, that sort of thing. Uh, and even actually bearing grease would be used good for that as well. But in this case, the customer has asked us and has supplied for us some uh, nickel construction grease. Now, this is really messy to work with. Like the second you touch it, it seems to go absolutely everywhere. Now this would normally be used in like aviation industry for high heat applications like jet engines, but um, yeah, we're gonna use it as, as they asked for. Again, it fits in there quite neatly in between our nobility chart, so it should work absolutely fine. One of the problems with T47 becoming more popular is tools. Now there aren't actually that many people making tools, or if they are making them, there's not actually that many people selling them right now. I had an old wheels manufacturing one that we destroyed. I had to buy the only tool that was available, which is these park ones. And if you'd be following the channel, you know that I'm not a massive fan of aluminium tools. They just get destroyed super fast. The sidewalls are a bit too thin. And they have improved these ones on the latest park ones. We'll see how they go. And also only a 3 8 drive as well, where we'd much prefer to have a, a proper half inch drive. Now the ice tools ones, which are our main go-to tools, they use a big half inch drive, they're made out of proper tool steel, they even do an impact proof one as well. Um, they're not bringing them into the UK. I can get them in every single country apart from in the UK. So thanks Brexit. So hopefully the UK distributor will be watching this and they'll start ordering and stocking T47. If you're in the market, please uh, send them an email, see if we can get these in the UK. Right, let's get going. <laughs> And I think you can see what I mean by nickel grease now. It's just such a dirty grease to work with. Wonder wipes to clean up all this, all this grease. Just don't know what it is with nickel grease, but it just goes everywhere. The second you touch it, <laughs> it looks like you've been down a coal mine. Three days later. A lot has happened since the last cut, I can tell you. But um, what happened after all the internal cable routine, we went to turn the handlebars and it wouldn't quite go far enough. And that was the full length brake hose. We didn't cut it at all. So we've had to order in a two meter long brake hose, which we'd normally use for a tandem, just to make sure we have enough length that the, uh, the customer can rotate their bars without putting the brake hose under any sort of stress. So a little bit of a delay, but it's always good to do these things absolutely perfectly. Got all the bar tape on. Our final job now is to get this set up to the customer's specifications. Got all the DI2 plugged in, it works. We're just waiting for the wheels to come out from their building and we've got some updates to run. But also, interestingly, this customer has asked us for a very unique setup on their DI2. So we're going for a hybrid system between the SRAM and the Shimano system. So we're gonna have the any click on the right hand lever is going to make it harder and any click on the left hand lever is going to make it easier. With the forward button on the DI2 shifting the front mech and the rearward button shifting the rear mech. So you've always got an easier, harder, so easier left hand, harder right hand, but then backwards rear gears, forwards front gears. Makes quite a lot of sense if you think about it. So we're gonna set those updates running now and then we're just gonna have enough time once the wheels arrive back to do some beauty shots at the end of the video to finish this awesome build up. Okay, while that's uploaded, it's got another like five minutes to run. I thought I'd show you actually how we've routed the cables. Now, 
the front gears, rear gears, battery all come together at that junction A, just like any other DI2 system. But we've got the longest cable that you can get, and that's going to run from the junction up here up to the exit point. And we've insulated that as well, so there's no chance of it rattling around and heat shrink to most of it up to sort of halfway down the down tube. And then that runs into this, the right hand shifter. And then from the right hand shifter, we have another cable that runs to the bottom of the handlebar inside the, uh, the handlebar, <laughs> down to the other side here. And around here is where we'll find the little Bluetooth module. Tiny little cable then takes us from the Bluetooth module into the charging port. And then from the charging port, we've got another cable that runs back up to the left hand shifter. And doing it this way means that you really do not see any cables at all. You know, it's the only cables you can see are literally just these tiny little bits here. Everything else has been completely concealed, just how the customer asked it to be. Pretty neat, I think. So weird. That way of making it harder. Front shift up there. Perfect. That's about as custom as you can get. Mm-hmm.